creating useful stored procedure for our execute automation reporting system. Stored procedures. Since execute automation reporting system UI is going to perform operations to the backend database, such as inserting results, searching test results, and creating test cycle ID. This test cycle ID creation will also happen from some of the external programs like Exit Automation Framework that we have. So all of them are going to be kind of same operation or duplicate operation which we are going to perform both from Exit Automation Reporting System UI as well as from the Exit Automation Framework that we are going to insert the data and fetch the data back from the database. So in order to simplify that, stored procedures are very very helpful and powerful. So it is important to have them in a stored procedure rather than writing a SQL queries since that leads to a lot of maintenance problem and also stored procedures are very very handy while your query has some of the logical conditional statements like if conditions. So it is always better to work with stored procedures and also stored procedures are like single line all you have to do is just pass the parameter to perform the operation by calling the stored procedure and your job is done. So there are a lot of online resources available to demonstrate why stored procedures are better than your plain old query. So please go back and Google and understand how stored procedure is much better than your plain query, right? So let's start writing the stored procedure then. So until now we have some of the tables in our database, errors database, and we have the constraints available. But as you can see to the programmability folder, there is something called stored procedure. You can see currently it is empty and the reason is because there is no stored procedure available in our database yet. So all we are going to do is we are going to insert some of the useful and very very handy data stored procedures into our database which we will be using both for our exit automation reporting system UI as well as in our EA framework. Alright, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to write some of the useful stored procedures so for that I'm just going to create a new query so that we don't have the extra clutter there and then I'm going to create these stored procedures as you can see these stored procedures are pretty straightforward and you can see it has a proc name saying sp underscore create test cycle ID so all it's going to do is if you call this stored procedure it is going to create a simple test cycle ID for you and it is going to insert the records that you are passing in into the TBL test cycle table. Remember the TBL test cycle table which actually has the application under test name, executed by, requested by, bill number, application version, date of execution, machine name and test type. And you also know that there is something called test cycle ID column within the table here you can see there is something called columns. This test cycle ID is actually a identity column. So you don't really have to insert any values for that. So as you can see, I'm not inserting that particular value at all. I'm just inserting all these columns values like AUT executed by all those stuff, right? So if I call this particular stored procedure and if I pass these parameters, that's it. We are pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to execute this particular stored procedure. All right, and now if I go to the programmability stored procedure and now if I just hit refresh, you can see that our new stored procedure sp underscore create test cycle ID is created here. And then I'm also going to create some other useful stored procedures here like sp underscore get filter data. And you'll understand why I'm creating this particular stored procedure while we discuss our exit automation reporting systems UI in our ASP.NET in our next section of this course. So what I'm doing here is I'm just inserting the test cycle ID executed by from date and to date. This is basically used for filtering some of the records from our exit automation reporting systems UI. So let me quickly run this and we will come to this particular stored procedure while we discuss the exit automation reporting systems UI in our next section of this course. So let me execute this as well. And then here is a very very fairly straightforward stored procedure sp underscore get last executor test cycle id or sp underscore get last test cycle id stored procedure. Basically what it does is if you execute this particular stored procedure you will get the last executor test cycle id of the tbl test cycle table right. So I'm going to create that as well and you can see that 
the logic within each and every stroke procedure is pretty straightforward. It's not at all any hard anywhere. And there is two more stroke procedures. One is SP underscore insert result. So it basically inserts the feature name, scenario name, step name, exceptions, result into the table. And I have added a for feature request only option, which is kind of commented. And the reason is because we will be talking about inserting screenshots in our upcoming section of this course. So as of now, this is commented, right? And then let me also quickly execute this particular store procedure as well. And there is one important point which I forgot to mention. Here you can see that I'm also getting the parent cycle ID like this, anti current of TBL test cycle. In this place, you can also call our store procedure sp underscore get last test cycle to perform the same operation, right? And the last store procedure is sp underscore TC details count. So this will be again used by our ERS UI. So we will come to this particular store procedure while we discuss about that. So let me also execute this particular store procedure. And now let's quickly refresh this particular folder and you can see that we will have all our five store procedures for our exit automation reporting systems UI as well as the consuming application, which is nothing but our EA framework. All right, guys. So this ends our exit automation reporting systems backend database creation. And now in the next video or in the next section, we will be creating the exit automation reporting systems UI and we'll see how to work with the database that we have created in more detail. Thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day.